can't tie dogs like this. Turn it on its side. Oh. One of the residents was actually attacked. This horse is very tense. He's so angry. He doesn't even want to move. Walk. The state of this dog is unacceptable. This animal abuser refuses to be placed under arrest. Previously on Animal Cops South Africa. Oh. oh my goodness. Come look here, boss. Well, back of the door is absolutely covered in blood. You can only imagine that there were animals ripping each other apart. That was four months ago. SPCA Chief Inspector Andries Fenter and Inspector Fox Murray had uncovered a pit bull fighting operation in the Woodstock area of Cape Town. This is a serious offence in terms of the Animals Protection Act. All the dogs were confiscated and the owner was charged with animal cruelty. After a waiting trial in prison, he was fined, required to do community service at the SPCA and banned from owning animals. But it seems that that's not the end of the story. This morning, Chief Inspector Fenter has received some worrying news. We're on our way. We don't know what we're going to find, so just uh, get people on standby for us, please. Part of the sentencing when he pleaded guilty was he's not allowed to own any animals for 15 years. We received new information that he's got more dogs where he's staying at the moment. He has not been to complete his community service. He hasn't paid his due in terms of uh, this, this, the sentencing. And he's on a, um, on a suspended sentence for those issues uh, for five years. Fenters brought senior inspector James Murphy with him. The man had pleaded guilty to five counts of animal cruelty, including fighting dogs and mutilating them by cropping their ears. If he's now acquired more dogs, Fenter needs to find out exactly what's going on. I've got a court order to enter the premises and to, in, to search his room, OK? Wayne. Last time, the man had tried to hide dogs from the police and the SPCA so they wouldn't see he was fighting them. Give me that dog and then you can talk to me. Why have you got another dog, eh? I'm laying charges against you for contravening your sentence. Like the ones he had before, the dog is a pit bull terrier. One dog was found in the room. It was tied to the window sill or something. It's got its ears cropped, but he says he got it like that. His ears are really badly cropped. And this is illegal. I mean, this poor dog's got no ears left. What do you mean I can't take dogs away from, from you? Okay. Look what, what you've done. I won't do the same thing again, Moss. No, 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 no. That's what you said in court. But There's a court order against you. I'm Don't you understand I'm it, Wayne? I'm not that stupid to do the same thing that... What's that? Okay, that's that. that, that. Now you're making me cross. I am not the court. The court ordered you may not keep any animals for 15 years. You saw the other dog. Where is it? Another tenant has more to tell them. Wayne? Oof. Walk. Uh, walk. No. Walk. No, I'm not going to walk that one. Please. Okay. okay. One. Please. Two. Three. Walk. Why do you... Listen to me. I am placing you under arrest in terms of the Animals Protection Act for once again no, concealing animals from me. Look what you're doing to me. I'm not. I'm not a dog. Please. You, you hit the dog, just just call the cops then? Nope. Do you understand me? I am placing you under arrest in terms of the Animals Protection Act. If you run, I will chase you and I've got the cops behind me. If you make one move, I promise you I will take you down. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come here. The man doesn't seem to realise he could be in trouble. Search his room for me, please. Complete search. Wayne, I'm ordering you to stop. Get in. Okay, come in. Come, come in. You are resisting arrest. It's an extra charge against you. 
Fenter uses the loud hailer on his vehicle to let everyone know what's happening here. This is an animal abuser who refuses to be placed under arrest. We have the police on their way. I will be following this person wherever he goes. I'm around 128 to Bear Street, passing 128, moving uh, north. There's the police. Wayne. Go with the cops. With the arrival of the police, the truth seems finally to dawn on the man. Fenter is deadly serious. You were lying to me all the time. You're running away from me. I didn't run. Wait, I placed you under arrest back there. Thank you very much. I will, I will see you once again in court. Okay. No, you like me again? No. Yeah, you are fine. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm going to go myself on the foot. I'm going to go to the man. I told you I'm placing you under arrest. Climb in the vehicle. Come on here. Take your boys to come in here. Come on. He's not taking the matter very seriously. I don't think he realized that we would do a follow up investigation on him. I think he was hoping that they, we would forget about him. He committed a crime, he was found guilty, he was sentenced, and he's done it again. His next uh, appearance in court will be on the 13th of December, and um, if he is found guilty again, he could end up getting a prison sentence this, this time. Senior Inspector James Murphy is heading for Fisantacrol, a fairly new community located to the north of Cape Town that has around 9,000 residents. Murphy's received a report that at one of the houses, dogs are being kept on tangled chains. Are you the owner of the dogs? No, the owner's goes to work. At work? Yeah. Are you related to the owner? And why are they ch chained up? We've got a problem, because you can't tie dogs like this. I want him to put up runners, and I don't want chains around the neck, I want collars, okay? okay? I don't know how he's going to do it, but he, he must do this. It's, it's, at this the way it is now, this is, this is unacceptable for the dogs to be chained up like this. Uh, I'm going to write this note, and then and he must contact me. Okay, otherwise I'll just, uh, if he doesn't respond within uh, the, the given period, then I'm going to have to come back and just okay. confiscate the dogs. There's three dogs on the property. Um, all three are chained up. Um, dog's condition is not of concern, but the chaining up is, and I've issued a warning accordingly and uh, given them a week to rectify the situation. Murphy will give the owner the chance to improve the dog's conditions before he takes any further action but he's certainly not going to see them left like this for much longer. An emergency call has come in to the Cape of Good Hope SPCA. Chief Inspector Andrew Sventer doesn't waste a second. Call about a dog that um, collapsed and fell into the canal and it's drowning at the moment. We need to get there before the animal actually drowns and hopefully we can rescue it. Send. Fenter has asked trainee inspector Wayne Hector to meet him at the location, one of the many drainage canals that crisscross the city. It's a very common call unfortunately because the canals are open and there's no fences and the amount of stray dogs that we have in the area is extremely problematic. The dog is on the verge of drowning when Fenter pulls it out of the water, but it is still alive. Turn it on its side, turn it on its side. Towards me, towards me, I, I need to dr drain the chest. The 
Rika. There we go. Whose dog is this? Whose is it? The dog's struggling to breathe, so Fenter decides to try a drastic measure. We're going to rush it back. I'm going to alert the vet that we're coming back for an emergency. They don't want to put any extra pressure on the dog's lungs, so have to carry it by its legs. Okay. Control, coming control. Go for control. Please advise the uh, hospital, we're bringing back a dog. We've tried resuscitating, it is still breathing. We're coming back right now. Pull the car in. Where's the vet? Back at the SPCA, vet Miles Penfold has been on standby, waiting for the dog's arrival. It seems it had been suffering for some time, not just from being in the canal. All Fenter's efforts might have been in vain. This guy here, I mean, he's, he's, he's hardly responsive to, to any sort of stimuli on the inside of the eye here. Um, if you listen to the heart, it's very slow, it's very erratic. Um, his breathing, he's like, so he's really struggling to get breath and everything um, inside here. If we look at the condition of him, I mean, he's pretty much, he's pretty much almost starved himself to death. So um, an animal like this, you know, they're so close to death, um, there's, there's absolutely nothing we can do for these guys. Do you know who this dog belongs to or belonged to? Now Fenter's attention turns to finding the person who has allowed the dog to suffer like this. Thanks, thanks, good. Appreciate it, eh? Bye. Uh, one of the guys that reported it um, stated that they might know where this dog comes from. If we can trace the, the, the owner and we can prove that it's due to their neglect, then we can actually take the case further because um, the state of this dog is unacceptable. Someone must have dumped it. They've done all they can for the dog. Now they'll have some hard questions for the owner. There's been a surprising development in the case of the pit bulls seized from the man who had previously been convicted of fighting dogs. This family claims one of the dogs is their family pet and was stolen from them. Denise Easton says the man originally gave the puppy to her son Craig and they named the dog Eve. We've had him now about six months and um, a couple of weeks ago the, the same person approached Craig to ask him to sell the dog back to him. Um, which Craig refused to do. And then two weeks later, Eve was stolen from us. We then heard that he had been arrested with uh, two dogs and we then discovered that one of the dogs was our dog. Eve had become a member of the family and they were devastated when she disappeared. Finding out who had taken her only adds to the relief of getting Eve back. Great to see her again. I'm actually really grateful to the SPCA for not only recovering Eve back to us, but also for cutting down on these gangs that actually participate and organize these dog fights. It makes me really angry to think that people actually rear and raise dogs for the purpose of fighting. I mean, I can't can comprehend the idea that anybody can think of something like that. Meanwhile, the dog fighter himself is now in prison, awaiting a new appearance before the court. Senior Inspector James Murphy is back at the house in Fisantacral, where he was concerned about the dog's tangled chains. This time he's brought trainee inspector Jacques Buis with him. We twisted off oh, my hat dog. He's got a runner here, but the chain's all twisted. Hey, are you running up and down too now? Hey, but you're all twisted too. Hey. The owner obviously got the warning notice Murphy left a week ago, 
and he's made some changes, but it's not acceptable yet. Where are you? Are you still chained up? No, 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 come on. He's erected two runners, but he hasn't got to this one yet. But you can see why the chain is all twisted here now, and this poor dog is a little lot shorter than it should be. The other two dogs are on runners. There's progress, but uh, he's still got a lot of work to do, and those runners aren't working 100%. So they're not giving the dog the freedom that, 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 that it needs. Well, I get loose, and now he's running up and down here and hurting himself. It's broken. Yeah. Just watch for the dog, huh? Yay! Murphy does his best to untangle the chains. Yeah. OK. Sit, sit. Come here. Now it's boy key. Hey. Yeah, boy key. He's excited to be loose. Hey, he's excited. There's a big boy. There's a big boy, hey? Just to make his dogs comfortable for now, I'm going to leave him another note. It's fine, baby. The owner seems to be acting in good faith. So even though he's still not satisfied with the situation, Murphy wants to give him the chance to put it right. OK, look, he's progressed. He's put up two runners. They don't work too well. I mean, that one's broken now. Um, and this one is uh, looking strong, but now he's got the wire here, which the dog's going to get knotted in, in in no time here. And he can't get to his water and all that. We are going to have to leave him another note and then uh, try and speak to him again and educate him on how to do a proper runner. Wildlife Inspector Kira Joshua is in the Observatory District of Cape Town. She's brought trainee inspector Wayne Hector to give her a hand with an unusual plea for help. We got a call this morning about a mongoose that's in a building at the film school here out in the observatory. Apparently the mongoose has taken refuge in one of the school's theatres. It's behind the board. Can you just see? Behind the board underneath there, yeah, at the bottom. I'm pretty sure it's an otter. How do we get underneath here? It's not a mongoose, it's an otter. But that doesn't make it any easier to catch. It's dark, but Kira spots the animal running underneath the seating platform. Yeah, he's there. He's there. You need to close up there, man. Can you close up a boat there? We're going to catch him now. Just try to let him run into there. They want to try to shepherd the otter towards the pet carrier. It's going to go in there. It's going to go in. Wait, 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 wait. Close. Well done, Wayne. Well done. I was hiding behind the white box at the back here, and they were trying to move it to steer it this way. The only way I could get into was into the box. So it was a great technique there, without handling the animal physically. Just walked right in. The plan has worked to perfection. Now they need to work quickly, because the otter has huge, razor-sharp teeth, and it's already trying to bite its way out of the box. Thankfully, there's a nature reserve nearby. We're going to be taking it to a reserve by the, by the Oppenberg over there, where there's a river where they naturally would occur. So we'll take that there. He can break through this. He's got quite the teeth. Okay, one, two, three, go. We need to try and do everything as quick as possible. Um, and like, fortunately for us, the release site's not far from um, where we caught this guy now. Probably comes from this river. We probably just went out looking for food and stuff. The otter's back in a more suitable habitat than the theatre. And everybody's happy. Senior Inspector James Murphy has been back several times to the house in Fisantacral, where three dogs were being kept on tangled chains, to try to get the owner to sort the problem out. This time, the owner's home. You get my note huh? on Friday. Well, well, it's Any onion after? Huh? So you haven't done him? Huh? So you haven't done the one at the back? <laughs> you haven't done him, then you haven't done the job properly then? Yeah, but I'm saying I gave you the note on Friday, so you had the whole weekend to do it. The owner says Murphy's picking on him. It's a reasonable request to put your dog on a runner. And I mean, you haven't done it. And I mean, look, that, that doesn't even got a swivel on it. If, you, if you're not even here, what is the point of having the dogs here? 
a coup cost a year on a sucker sucker cost. I, I, I know there's other cases that need to be dealt with, but I'm dealing with you right now, one at a time. If we come back again and one of the dogs is chained, then we're gonna remove them all. He says he took off today to, to actually sort this out, but I mean, we left the warning on Friday and, and, and you know, he should have had, they had all three on, on runners. Um, the one at the back is still on the chain, chain to the tree. Okay, this one's basically always been on the runner, but I mean, the collar's not exactly ideal. Um, the wire's there. You can't have a thing like this around his neck. Yeah, but the wires are here. There's wires sticking at you. Look, I've, I've been reasonable. I mean, I've given you more than a month already, and, it, and it's still not right. I actually came here with the intention that if it wasn't right, I was going to take your dogs, and I can do that. You know, you need to work with me. Inspector Fox Murray thinks they should give him one more chance. The animals' lives aren't in danger. They aren't sort of being neglected or anything. So, you know, you want to try to work with the guy. We'll give him a little bit more time and you know, let's see if he can get it together. He kind of understands now what has to be done. So you're going to get this done by tomorrow? The man's not happy, but now he has an ultimatum. Now trainee inspector Wayne Hector is returning to the neighborhood where a dog was found drowning in a drainage canal. The dog was too close to death to be saved, even by the SPCA hospital. They want to find out how the dog came to be in such a tragic situation. Just gonna see if you can find the owner of the dog. Let's have a chat to him and see what's happened, what happened, what, what, what's the reason for the dog being in a, in a canal. The call for help came from a young man who spotted the dog in distress. As I was walking down with my friend, so I looked into the, the canal and so I saw the dog lying in the gap. So I went to go and phone the SPCA and the dog slipped into the water when we got back. So the dog's head was going under the water and it was starting to drown. So we got in the water and we tried to hold the dog's head up out of the water until the SPCA came. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I really thought the dog was going to die. Hello. Wayne has found the man who owned the dog. He says it's his dog. I don't know how he knows that we found this dog, but he knows we found the dog in the kennel. What he says is uh, that he's got a three weeks old pups from that dog, and he sold the dog off to so another person for 50 then. Um, he gave me a name. But he can't remember the street address, so I told him that he's, he, you know, he's, what he needs to do now is to, in a sworn affidavit, to state his case and give us the address and details of the, um, the person that he sold the dog to. I can't prove anything. I can't say he's lying. I can't say he's saying the truth. But through this, coming to the police station, make a sworn affidavit, then we, we will see. Maybe we get some answers. Wayne needs the man to state in a legal document that he no longer owned the dog on the day it was found in the canal. Then he'll consult with Chief Inspector Fenter as to what they should do next. The following day brings a damp start, but good news for trainee inspector Wayne. He's not a trainee anymore. Wayne's promotion has just been approved. Now he has his first call as a fully fledged inspector. We had a complaint, got a horse hooked up to a cart and it's working at the moment, but um, the horse doesn't look so well. It's sick and it looks very, um, yeah, sick and injured maybe. And they don't, uh, we, the complaint is actually the horse doesn't look seem fit to work. So we get to see the scene and maybe if, if the horse is not fit to work, then we'd rather bring it in. It. Horses and carts are a traditional form of transport in Cape Town. These days, mostly for scrap metal. There are an estimated 500 working cart horses in the city and their welfare is of great concern to the SPCA. A few miles away from Grassy Park, Wayne spots the cart. It's made from half a car, a heavy load for any horse to pull. The horse has been unharnessed and allowed to graze. It's in a very poor state. The young man says it's not his own horse. He's hired it from the owner. 
zoos is very thin. You can see the ribs exposing here, as well as the bones. You can see the bones here. If you, if you look from behind, you'll see the horse is very underweight. If it was in a good condition, it would be, it would be okay. But you can see the horse is too thin to pull this and it might, might get injured or anything. It might collapse so for overwork. I understand everybody has to work, they, they're just doing a job here, but they have to consider the animal in the case as well. Um, you can't just work an animal to the bone. She's so hungry, he doesn't even want to move. He's still busy eating, he's so hungry. Wayne makes his decision. The horse will go back to the SPCA for an expert assessment and to begin its recovery. Inspector Wilbur Kenkebi has arrived to help load the animal. Once the horse is safe at the SPCA, Wayne can try to locate the owner. First, he wants to show the horse to SPCA stable master Hilton Davy, known as Tex. He's very much dehydrated, as you can see. He's the back area here, the spine is protruding, there's no muscle tone whatsoever. He's drawn in here on his hindquarter region in the hip, re hip area. He's lost one shoe here. Uh, the reason being, uh, it's been on so long that the nails have actually corroded and the, the, sh the shoe is separated from the hoof. This type of horse should be shot at least once every three weeks, minimum, because they are on the road every day. The first priority is to give the horse some proper food. What we will do with this fellow now is we will hold him uh, we'll put some nutrition into him, we'll give him a course of vitamins, feed him up, get him back to his right weight before he is released, if he is released. And if he is, it would be under a warning. Uh, this is fairly common, these ponies, uh, these guys, it's their living. So uh, we, we try and educate as well, you know, when dealing with ponies like this. Fortunately, he's a bit on the young side. Uh, if he was an old pony, we would recommend that he would be booked off uh, not to work again on the road. With the horse in Texas care, Wayne's next job is to find the owner and see what he has to say about the pitiful condition his animal is in. It's decision day for the dogs being kept on tangled chains in Fisantacral. The owner has had over a month to follow Senior Inspector James Murphy's advice and provide runners that won't get tangled. Friendly. Murphy and Inspector Friendly. Fox Murray are back at the house. There you go. Hello. It's nice, eh? Your dog. Very nice. Very nice. It's in good condition. Yeah. It's good. The dog is on a runner, but the runner's seriously twisted. So he's basically stuck in the sun. He can't do anything. I've given him so much time and I've given him numerous warnings and I've told him how to do the runners, how to make the dog's life better. And the dog can't get even to his kennel. I don't know if he can even get to the water. As well as all the wire, I mean, look at this that he can get tangled in. Easily hurt himself, cut himself. Barbed wire, yeah, as well that he's running around him. So, for the dog's own safety, it needs to be removed. Really, we can't leave these dogs like this. So, we need to show him a little bit of force and uh, mean yeah, business. Mean business, if you mean business, and we'll take the dogs and, and uh, give him time to set up the runners. Up to well if, he doesn't, doesn't, uh, if he doesn't do that, then we just say, look, we're going to rehab the dogs. Come on, come on. Hey, stop it. All the dogs will go back to the SPCA. Yeah. Hey. It's a little bit hot in the action. Because they've been tied up all of their lives, you know, they probably have never even had a chance to socialize with each other. So suddenly it's, we're free, you know, hormones are pumping, everything's pumping. So I think it's more of them just sort of saying hello. Murphy's notice makes it clear. Time is up. You can talk only so much before you have to take action to actually get people to realize that you are serious about complying with the law.
Chief Inspector Andries Fenter and Inspector Wayne Hector are on their way to see the man whose dog was found drowning in a canal. He claimed to have sold the dog shortly before. His story hasn't convinced Fenter. We came back today to um, interview the owner on the condition of his dog that we found in the canal that we had to rescue. We asked him for proof that he was or wasn't the owner of, of the dog and up until now he has not been forthcoming with the information. So we've decided to come back and to inform him that we will be formally laying charges against him and we wanted to check up on the rest of his animals. Hey, careful. I can't get through you. Can I go through? The man's not home, but there are four puppies. These puppies don't look well. Well, I think what we do is we take them in and we leave a notice and he must come and see us. Okay? He, he must come and see us. Okay? Post-mortem tests showed that the drowning dog was also suffering from a number of life-threatening diseases. It doesn't bode well for these pups. We're removing them um, in the fear that they may go the same way as the other dog did. Um, and we're leaving a notice for the owner to come and see us instead of us, instead of us having to chase him. And the fact is, he knows of us, he knows about us, and, and he still lets his dogs go this way. <laughs> if you just want to cut his head, it's fine. Wayne knows these communities well. He thinks education is the key. Not that happy. We can do more work here in this, in this small community. We can do more work here. But yeah, a bit, we need more time and manpower to be able to control areas like this. And, but yeah, one step at a time. Fenter's file on the case will be handed over to the police before being presented to the public prosecutor. The pups will be taken back to the SPCA to be examined by the vets. Fenter suspects the pups are ill. They'll be kept away from other animals for now. What concerns me most is the the loss of hair from the tail up the body. Look at that. Fleas, they're very ribby when they walk. You can see they, they, they might have worms. Fenter wants to get the full picture on their health. We're going to ask the vets um, to check these puppies out properly, to provide us with uh, another vet report, just to back us up on the first dog. And, um, that will be our, our evidence, and hopefully we can get them sorted out soon. Next day, their worst fears are confirmed. The pups have the deadly disease Parvo, a highly contagious virus that attacks the digestive system. Even if the pups survive the infection, they are likely to be unhealthy for the rest of their lives. The decision is taken that humane euthanasia is the kindest option. The spread of diseases like Parvo is a major concern for the SPCA, especially in communities where most people can't afford to take their animals to a vet. Today, Wayne's been detailed to visit one of these communities to try to take some preventative measures. We're off to Hillview. Um, it's an area where there's a lot of mains dogs and sick dogs roaming in the streets. Um, the main idea is to go in there, clean up, take as many animals in as, uh, as we can. Wayne will be accompanied by new trainee inspector Moyo Makar. Training to become an inspector takes almost a year. There are 93 societies for the prevention of cruelty to animals in South Africa, and there are strict national standards that all their inspectors have to meet. The community is on the edge of the city. Wayne spent his early childhood in a settlement like this. So he feels he's the right man for today's task. He'll be keeping a sharp eye out for any signs of disease. Today, I think we need to concentrate on the street. It's the only way we can conquer this, if you take them a small bit at a time. The main thing is to be proactive so people know what's, what's it about and bring the message to that they, they don't have to let the dog suffer. So they can always bring it to the SPCA for assistance. Like, for instance, there's one there. Um, it's very sick. You can see there's, it's got a bit of mains. 
Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You can see here the ice is watery. Uh, some yellow in injuries. And also, see the director of the hospital. Look, we we must handle it. We so so I only spy is sick and it's and it's from injuries so bad. He's willing giving it to the SPCA. The sign over is because you can't look after it anymore. It's got injuries and it's it's not it's not um, well. It looks sick. It's not always that's easy. We the, we get the owner and the owner says okay, take the dog. Come. Come. Then then Rocky. They can see the owners if it's so in now. Okay, Scuppy. Stay, girl. Stay, stay. Oh. As I alone, you have to be reasonable with people also. They love the animals, so get them to try something at least. Get halfway, get halfway there and maybe we can meet them the other half, half of the way. Every home has at least one dog and many of them need veterinary care. Many of the dogs are free to wander the streets, so any disease can quickly spread. The dog is suffering. I'm taking the dog in, and if there's any, I'll, I'll leave a note there to say that the owner must come and see me uh, if he wants to uh, talk to me about the dog. But I'm taking the dog into the hospital. Um, you can see the eyes here, there's some green stuff coming out of the eye. You see, that's a, that's a, that's a bad sign because it, it could be CD, it could be bubble. It's a very dangerous disease. If he walks around with this disease, he can make all of these animals sick and severely sick and they will just die in the night. Ah, I'm going check. Take that off again. Where is the bubble? Look, I can look at you. We just want to see where, where the dog's sleeping at night and um, for the puppies it's getting cold, it's very cold at night and the puppies must be kept warm. So um, she's, uh, just ask if they got a kennel. Okay, 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 okay. One member of the community has been taking in animals that other people have rejected. He's doing his best, but Wayne thinks he's taken on too much. He's a guy that loves animals. He's willing to sign over two dogs to us and even if, if, and I told him that he shouldn't be taking in more dogs and more dogs because he's going to have so many dogs that they can't afford to, to keep them all. He's got a, a passion for animals, so he can't leave a dog astray, um, like sick and suffering. And what he'll do is he'll just pick it up and bring it down and then try to nurse it back to Yalta down here. Five dogs will all go back to the SPCA to see whether they can be treated and returned to their owners or whether new homes can be found for them. Whatever happens, it'll be one vital step towards improving the overall health of this community's animals. The message here today for, for these people is um, they, don't have to, they don't have to let the dogs wander around and bite people and get sick and spread diseases where they can rather bring it to the SPCA or as an unwanted, you can't afford it anymore. The best thing is to bring the dogs in and we might get a grip on this um, dog population. Different communities have different problems. Wildlife Inspector Kira Joshua and Senior Inspector James Murphy are in the affluent neighborhood of Claremont. A large family of geese has decided it's a nice place to live and they've moved into the swimming pool of an apartment complex. We got a call about Egyptian goslings. It's here, they're about seven weeks old now and parents and the residents want the, the, the goslings to be removed. The main problem is pretty obvious. We clean this area at least three times a day to get, because when they get to six weeks old, they become very messy. But that's not all. According to James, one of the residents was actually attacked by the male. This is the first time we've really had a problem with uh, the parents being very young and very aggressive. And they killed um, one of the other geese the other week. Each breeding pair is kind of different to another. So you'll have like the father will sometimes attack. Geese seem to have a reputation. Depending on how, you know, how they get you, they, they actually smack you with their wing and that can be pretty painful, so. 
We're going to try and get the, the goslings first and the parents hopefully will naturally just come towards us and then make it easy for us to capture the parents as well. Are you touching this way? Egyptian geese are found throughout southern Africa. They like damp savannah, but they'll settle for a swimming pool, and there are lots of those in Cape Town. That means this is a regular call for Kira. James has managed to catch the female. Because they stay together for life, if you release the mother with the babies, she can't protect the the baby's by herself, so they need, they need to. <laughs> what Kira was trying to say before she was interrupted is that these geese mate for life, so they need to either catch both the male and the female or leave both behind. Come on, where are you? James hopes the female goose will draw the male towards him again towards so they can net him. <coughs> You let it go. Oh, I've done it before and I've caught the, both parents like that. You just kind of use the mother as bait and, and, and the father comes and attacks you, then you just net, her, but, uh, net him, but uh, it didn't work this time. They've had to give up on relocating the whole family. Plan B is for the goslings to go to a wildlife rehabilitation centre a few miles away. Without their children, the adults will be less aggressive and might even move elsewhere. The owner of the emaciated horse that Inspector Wayne Hector rescued from the side of the road has been in touch. He wants his horse back, so Wayne's asked him to come to the SPCA to discuss the situation with Wayne and stable master Tex Davey. I'm just going to see the owner that, um, that we gave the warning to. He's, he's here to come see his horse and maybe instruct him about what, what's happening, why is the horse in that condition. Even after just two days, the horse is looking better than it was. He's a working horse, okay. Yeah. You see, he's lost the muscle tone. Yeah. So in other words, that pushing, yeah. that power. So he's, it's from Yamos. Correct. You so, see? He's, so he's, he's struggling. So yeah. he's going to labour. You understand? But if you change your feed alone to the 10%, mm. you'll see a market difference. Yeah? Okay. I can almost guarantee you. So can I go now? Yes, you can. Thanks very much. Well, okay. He himself hasn't been monitoring this. Tex has decided the owner can have his horse back. But Wayne will be keeping a close eye on the situation over the coming weeks. Every case is, is unique. Every case is different. I have been informed that he has had internal family problems. So he, in actual fact, has taken over these horses. He's taken over a problem that's been going on which he wasn't aware of until now. He is prepared to change the feeding of the horse, which needs to be done. Okay, We will be monitoring that. The pony has st must stand for two weeks, which I'm sure it will, because it will be monitored. And uh, we will take it from there. In a way, he, the main thing also is education, that we, we did get the message through to someone. Kira and James have brought the goslings removed from the swimming pool in Claremont to the Wildlife Rehabilitation Centre run by Margot Wilkie in Pinelands. They'll probably be a little bit unsettled for a day or two and then they'll just carry on eating and living normally. Um, the goslings will stay here for a while until they're what, six months old, is five and a half, six months old when they start flying. Um, and then they'll be either fly away or be released. All we do is feed them and clean them and give them heat at night and sunshine during the day. And it's an endless task. Just before they're ready to fly, I try and place them out to small holdings and zoos and farms that have open ponds. The goslings will have plenty of company here. 
something that I've always done, always been involved with animals. And I just found through the years, um, there's so many organisations that handle dogs and cats, domestic animals, and nothing that handles the wild animals. I just took in and, and tried to help members of the public with, with wild animal problems. The goslings can make all the mess they like here and Margot will protect them until they're old enough to fend for themselves. Two weeks after Senior Inspector James Murphy and Inspector Fox Moray confiscated three dogs in Fisanta Kral, they're back and they've brought the dogs with them. The owner has called and told them he's done what they asked, even if it has taken him three months. We're back at the uh, residence um, with the three dogs we confiscated. Um, the owners apparently made amends, so we're here to check on it, and if it's good, then we're going to uh, release the dogs. OK, you've, let's see what you've done here now. OK. Um, there's the runner. That, oh, this, this one was all right, I think. This, this one was all right, yeah. OK, yeah, that's fine. And then they need a water bowl here and that sort of thing as well. I think it's, uh, it's a lot better off. They can have free access up and down the runner to their kennel, to the water, to the food. Let's see this one. OK, yeah, now that's right, yeah. yeah. OK, so you got another one of those. I'm satisfied he's, he's, he's done some, some extra work. That, so he's put three, the three runners up, and uh, I think the, the dog's lives will be improved. I think this is his chains, eh? Little um, short kittens. You need to put the chains from the from the neck onto the onto the runners to secure the dogs to the dogs to the runners. But he needs to put leather collars on. They don't hurt the dogs so much as a chain around the neck does. Yay, Smiley! Yay, Zulu! The dogs seem glad to be home, and they'll be even happier now that they'll have freedom to move about on their new runners. This is a what they call a seizure release form, which um, basically gives us a hold on the dogs um, to the point that if uh, an inspector comes to the property again and finds circumstances unacceptable, an inspector will then have the full right to remove the dogs immediately. We've spent quite a lot of time on this case, and I think uh, just pushing hard enough will get you to where you want to, want to be, where the animals actually have a better life. OK. All right. Persistence has paid off, and now three dogs have a better life because of it. Okay, that whole leg is broken. Pull the net tighter. Oh, watch out, watch out. This is one of the worst injuries I've seen with a dog bite. We'll confiscate this dog. We will take it by force. Make sure the tie doesn't come in. OK, baby. Oh, my gosh. That one's been choked. Cape Town, South Africa. From here, the Cape of Good Hope Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals covers an area of 9,000 square miles. 10 inspectors respond to over 6,000 calls a year, reports of cruelty and pleas for help. Today, there's an emergency for Chief Inspector Andres Fenter. A cat is trapped by its leg, in pain and in danger. The neighbours have called it in, uh, saying that uh, they're very concerned that the cat has been there for quite some time. I'm trying to get there as soon as possible, because you never know how bad these, these situations are, and uh, if it's been there for that long, then it could be dehydrated, it could be quite severely injured. Where's a cafe? Okay. Uh, okay. 
The cat's leg is jammed between the joints of a cement wall. I don't know how you got this right. Okay, know that that whole leg is, looks like it's broken off. Yeah, I hope not. Okay, 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 okay. okay. It looks like uh, it jumped over the wall and the leg slipped and slipped in between the cement wall. There's no way I can try and push this wall to your side. Yeah, this is going to hurt. With the help of the neighbours, Fenter manages to ease the leg free. And now he can see it's seriously damaged. Can I go through your house? That leg's completely twisted and completely mangled. Oh, who are the owners? The cafe. Do they know that we're taking it? Yeah, because I'm telling my friend in the SPCA. It's not far away and our vets are on standby. There's no time to wait for the owner. The cat needs to get to the hospital urgently. Control, control, coming for Alpha. Now I'm on my way back with the cat. The left rear leg seems to be quite badly fractured and twisted. If you could get let the vets know, I'm on my way back. Back at the SPCA's HQ in the Grassy Park District, vet Miles Penfold is standing by. The cat seems to be in a state of shock. You know, like it, eh? Okay. Got a feel on there. What I'm doing here is I'm just doing a, a palpation of this leg. Because he's been hanging on the leg, we wanted to see is it dislocated or are there any obvious fractures that, that, um, that we can pick up. And then on x-ray, we'll see anything that, that we haven't palpated. We can very clearly see there's a massive problem down here, but we just want to check the rest of the leg. The tibia has dislocated completely from the metatarsal region over here. All the ligaments you can, you can just see from this leg have already been torn. Um, so what we're going to do now is give him a, an anesthetic and do the x-ray see what's happening on there and then make a decision from there. Once the sedative has taken effect, Miles can use the x-rays to get a proper look at what's going on inside the leg. Only then will he know whether it can be saved. <laughs> Inspector Wilbur Kinkabe is just a few miles away. He's been called in by the police. A horse has been viciously attacked by a dog. The dog just came and bite the horse on the road. <laughs> this gentleman is the owner of the horse. Now I'm just waiting for the horse box to take him. He's still coming now. now. Um, I came down with the horse. Apparently the dog came running out and the dog started just putting the horse. And I tried to get the dog away. Police Captain Isaac Hanacom was first on the scene after the attack. While we were on patrol, we saw the horse coming running in the, from that direction towards the side. And we drove past the, 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 we followed the horse, put on the sirens and everything. And I jumped out of the police vehicle and I tried to get hold of his rope. And I found the rope and I tightened him here through this thing. And I saw the severe injuries this horse sustained. First time I see this kind of thing. We are horses being bitten like this by a dog. It is shocking because apparently the people of the dog, they're also scared for the dog. We'll do everything in our power to see that uh, something has been done to, to the owner of this, of this dog. Trainee equine inspector Jacques Buiz has arrived with the horse box. I need to go to the owner. I think the owner should uh, sign this dog over because it's a dangerous dog. I mean, he, he might, might have killed the child. Just open there for that. Buiz will take the horse back to the SPCA. Wilbur will try to track down the attacker before it does any more harm. The horse that was attacked by a pit bull terrier has arrived at the SPCA for medical treatment. The vets have helped stable master Tex Davy make an initial assessment of the damage. She's in shock, she's in a state of shock. We have given her medicine to, 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 to combat that. We've also given her antibiotic and a painkiller. 
Okay, Messi. Okay, 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 okay. Trainee equine inspector Jacques Buis flushes out the wounds. This is one of the worst injuries I've seen with a dog bite because it's quite substantial. Possibly the good thing about it is that it's cleanly sliced because that's basically what it has, has happened there. Apparently, I think this was a pit bull. We'll have to treat this as an open wound. We won't be able to stitch uh, because of the, the depth of the wound. Tex is hopeful that the horse will respond to treatment. But with such an unusual case, he can't know for sure whether a full recovery is possible or how long it will take. What we're doing at the moment is we, we're shaving around the wound, about around the, the damaged area, in order to prep for ointments and so on, to keep this wound clean and insert antiseptics into the wound and actually pack it. Fortunately, she's very good. I know it's difficult, but I, th I think more, more, more dog control is needed. And, and especially in recent times, it's become a, a, a big problem. People getting bitten by dogs, especially those type of dogs. You know, unfortunately, at the end of the day, it's not, it's not really the dog, it's, it's the owners. And the problem lies with keeping correct controls and so on in place. Now Inspector Wilbur Kenkebi wants to find the dog that carried out the attack. The police officers who found the horse have established where the dog lives. Police Captain Isaac Hanacon accompanies Wilbur to speak to the owners. The dog's back in its yard and chained, but Wilbur's not happy to leave it here. Um, I just got this case where the dog uh, bit the horse. Ah. So I was just coming to talk with you people to sign this dog over because it is a danger. Don't you want to sign this dog over to us? Huh? No, it's not a problem. You can, it's fine. And then I'll, I'll, you can speak to the law enforcement for this. So the law enforcement will confiscate this dog. They will take it by force. They have the powers to do that. The owner doesn't want to sign it over. This one will attack you. It's very dangerous. Wilbur and Captain Hanacom decide to back off and give the owners time to think about their decision. Finally, they relent and sign the dog over. He'll be taken to the SPCA for assessment. It's warming up in Cape Town, and spring's the breeding season for the Cape fur seal. That means there are thousands of pups swimming around just off the shore, and some of them, inevitably, are going to get into trouble. Wildlife inspector Kira Joshua has received a call from a member of the public who has spotted a young seal in distress. Is he on, on, the, on the rocks entangled? Kira has brought trainee inspector Liesel Pinar with her, the rocks are not far from the Cape Town waterfront. According to um, that man over there, it's a pup still, so it should be very, fairly young and small. Um, it seems to be entangled in fishing nets. It doesn't seem as though it can go anywhere. So we're just going to see if we can help him out. The tide's coming in, and the tangled net is hampering the seal's ability to swim. Kira and Liesel need to work quickly. Liesel, you want to go on top? I'm going to go down here. Just make a noise or something on that side. Liesel draws the seal's attention as Kira edges closer with the net. Can you come in between over here? Between yeah. the rocks. Between the rocks here. He's stuck, we can't go anywhere. Okay. Okay. Got him? Yep. Oh. OK, babes. OK, baby. Make sure the tide doesn't come in as well. We find a lot of seals like this out here because they come into the harbour and it's basically pollution in that. Um, 
and this is what happens. The animals become entangled in it. It starts cutting into them. The netting got stuck on the side of the rock over there. Um, so it was easier. Otherwise, if it wasn't stuck, we wouldn't have been able to get him to get this. Oh, okay, just make doubly sure. Hey, baby. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Oh. The pup's healthy and has no injuries. So now that he's free of the net, he can make his own way back into the water. It's very really hard working on the, the rocks tied coming in and everything, but um, this was successful, so. At the SPCA hospital in Grassy Park, X-rays have confirmed vet Miles Penfold's fears for the cat, whose leg got trapped in a wall. The cat's now being prepared for surgery. If we look in the X-ray here, the, the pelvis is fine. There's, there's no problems that we're seeing there. But the, the major problem is, is this. Uh, the actual shin bone over here is, 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 is majorly dislocated. It should be sitting nicely on top of this and um, it's, it's out by you know, quite, a, quite a decent distance here. So all the ligaments are completely ripped on that there. Um, really, it just confirms what we felt in the clinical. We will go ahead with an amputation. What we will do with the amputation is we'll take the, the, uh, the, the whole leg off up at this, this area up here. So we'll, we'll, we'll basically go and take all the muscles off here and then we just take the, the top of the, the femur right there, lift that off, close the muscles up, and uh, they'll do very, very well like that. Miles is convinced amputation is the best thing for the animal. Ideally, we always want to save the limb, but if we do go about an amputation, what we find with cats is they handle it really, really well. You know, we do two or three a week, and they, they work very, very well. So not quite like people where we've only got two legs, you take one off, it really becomes a problem. On three legs, they do brilliantly. The operation will take under two hours, and then the cat can begin his recovery on three healthy legs. Inspector Wilbur Kenkabi is on the road again. He's received a report of a pack of unhealthy dogs being kept in a yard in Lavender Hill. Today, sir, I'm an Inspector Wilbur from the SPCA. Uh -huh. I received a complaint about dogs here that you got uh, plus minus 10 dogs that are, uh, appear to be thin and have uh, uh, mange. The man says the dogs belong to his wife, but he'll show them to Wilbur. Wilbur can see straight away there are problems. These dogs are, you see these with the long hair, they are, are muttered, look at those. And the others, like this one, he's got manes, you can see on his ears, on his face, this place is unhygienic with this mattress and things. It causes them having fleas. They've got too much fleas. Local bylaws prohibit anyone from keeping more than three dogs, quite apart from the health issues. Something needs to be done. I'm co concerned about it, the yard itself and the number of dogs that are here. There's too many dogs. Uh, if you can have uh, less dogs, you can be able to sort of having them sterilized and you can be able to have uh, them treated. Hello, 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 hello. The man's wife has returned. She's not happy at Wilbur's proposal that he should take some of the dogs. Wilbur decides to give her a chance. What I'm going to do now, I've just spoken to this lady now, that this is not right to have so many dogs. But um, I won't enforce taking these dogs right now. But you must clear up this in here outside. And you must clean up there and then take these weeds out mm. because they're causing ticks on the dogs. 
Okay, I'll give you a warning note now. Okay. To take these dogs to uh, uh, um, a clinic. But this is not going to be just once, it's going to be on a regular basis. The woman will have to take responsibility for the dog's health if she's to keep them. The dogs are, are overcrowded, but they're not dying. And I have to give that four or seven days a, a, a warning note. I, I don't have to confiscate the right away. Only when they haven't done anything on the seven days, then I will take action. Wilbur will be back in a week's time to make sure the dogs have been to a vet and a groomer and that the yard has been cleaned up. If not, he won't need to give a second warning. Senior Inspector James Murphy has received a disturbing call. Two dogs are alleged to have been dumped down a drain. Murphy doesn't know yet whether they are alive or dead. Murphy's brought trainee inspector Moyo Makar with him. Oh my gosh. That one's been choked. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Okay. Looks like this one's kind of been tied there or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in a terrible state, but both dogs are still alive. They could have fallen down there, um, but the one has got a lead on it around its neck and it looks a bit like it's choking, so the sooner we get down there, the better. Moyo volunteers to get the dogs out. Hello, puppy. Come on, puppy. I don't know how long they've Come been down here, but they've been drinking this water. I mean, it's pretty gross. Hello, boy. Just careful what you stand on there. Yeah, it yeah. might sink oh. in. It looks solid at the bottom there, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, I don't think he's going to bite. Oh, he's got a... He's got a tie. Looks like a school tie or something. Yeah. Either. And it's got a, a tight knot. It's strangled. And the mouth is a bit swollen, so the circulation is bad. It's looking like this was no accident. I think the circulation, the circulation has been very bad. Okay. It's all right, boy. It's all right. Oh, careful. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. All right. Okay. It's all right. Okay. The whole mouth is all swollen. Okay, I think the best is just to get him into the box and then we'll leave the vet to examine that and decide yeah. what to do with that. Okay. This is good. You go. Yeah. Got him? Yeah. Come on, boy. It's all right, baby. It's all right. It's all right. Is that also a school tie? Right. Yes, it's also got a tie. There we go. It's got blood oh, dripping. Light him off the yeah, one of the toes, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, so, so he's cut his foot. Yeah, he's got his well. cut his foot and okay. yeah, the tumor. Yeah. Okay, so, let's get it inside. Okay, boy. Let's put it over. Okay. The dogs have been suffering, and it seems that dumping them may have been a deliberate act of cruelty. But the priority for now is to get them to the hospital. The day is nearing its end but the SPCA's inspectors are still hard at work. Conchita Milburn has received a call for assistance from fellow inspector Nelson Sawati. Cape Town is crisscrossed by canals designed to drain away floodwaters in times of heavy rain. They can be dangerous places for an animal. We've got a, it appears to be a white hole session that's fallen into the canal. The canal's sides are too steep for the dog to climb out on its own. It's now hungry, exhausted, and fearful. Conchita and Nelson have come up with a plan. So we're just gonna go to inspectors on either side and then move towards the center. Apparently the dog may have been there since Saturday, so they normally become quite wary and agitated. We need to get into the water. I'm doing all right. Okay, we Unfortunately, the dog has other ideas. The makeshift barrier is not going to hold him back. Go through. We need to hold it tighter. All right. He has gone now further in order to. Yeah, I'm going to drive down. Okay. 
If I can drive down, then I'll, I'll chase him this way. This way, okay. Yeah. So maybe you guys stay stay here. But just pull the net tighter. All right. The dog travels quickly through the shallow water, and he's soon out of sight. As Conchita trudges along the canal, she realizes it's not going to be as simple as she thought. Okay, we've got a problem in that the dog is coming back towards you guys, but there's a split in the canal going right and left. As I was walking, he just kept on walking away from me. And then I saw him turn around. So as far as I know, he's heading this way. But the other problem is we've got these stormwater drain pipes on the side. He's disappeared, and it's getting late. If they spot him again tomorrow morning, let us know. That's all they can do. I mean, unfortunately. It's just horrible leaving there. They'll be back as soon as anyone sights the dog. He shouldn't come to harm, unless there are storms in the night. I got stones in my beach. Senior SPCA inspector James Murphy and trainee inspector Moyo Makar are on their way to the hospital with the two dogs that appeared to have been cruelly left in a drain to die. Vet Miles Penfold will examine them. Do we know how long they've been there or? No idea how long they've been there. Okay, right, let's have a look at you. It's a little girl here. Now this one's quite rather thin. You can start feeling the muscles up on the top of the head. So straight away it's telling me that you know, if this is an owned animal, this certainly hasn't been looked after. Oh, let's have a look at this side. Thanks. Now Miles has discovered another, more serious problem. Right, as we get onto the abdominal palpation, what we've discovered is this, a very hard nodular mass. It's got a, like, a really strong pulse along the inside of it. That's the first thing that strikes me is this is really, really strange. Most likely a, a cancer of sorts. Um, not great for this dog at all here. You know, I don't know where else this may or may not have spread and uh, with a stray dog in this condition, I think it's unlikely that we're gonna have an owner coming forward here. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a great prognosis for, for her. And uh, left on its, on its own, this could, you know, could result in just quite a slow, you know, painful death down the line. Now for the second dog. And if anything, it's in even worse shape. All right, there we go, pups. The first thing we can see from, from this dog is it's completely emaciated, quite close to the point of starvation. We've got a massive, massive, massive lump that's not attached to the vertebra, that's free moving at the, the back of the abdomen here. It's in the region of the bladder, but it's, it's just a hard lump. Is this another cancer that's sitting here? We've really got an animal that's on the point of death end, and uh, we certainly aren't going to, to just let them carry on suffering like that. Um, so it's, it's actually really fortunate for this, this animal that, that she's been able to come through here. Um, unfortunately, she's really you know, too far gone to get her better from, from this stage. Um, and and it's, it's actually going to be far, far more you know, humane to, to just let her go. If we hadn't found them in that, um, in that, in that hole today, probably within the next three to four days, they would have died of, 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 of hunger and starvation, and that's a really slow, painful death. And, um, you, know, you know, thank you to the person that, that has brought them and that we can actually let them go, you know, without letting them go through that unnecessary suffering. It's a sad ending, but uh, it's a more humane one than to actually just be left dying in a sewer. Pretty sad uh, state, you know, that people actually go to the lengths to actually dump an animal down there. It's really a sad reflection on our people. What we would have loved to do is, is find out who the culprit was and, 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 and you know, take him to court. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. Nobody's going to really come forward and, you know, you, you'll never find the owner of the dogs. So, you know, it's, it's just saddening, you know, that people would resort to such cruelty.
Yesterday, inspectors Conchita Milburn and Nelson Sawati had to abandon their attempt to rescue a dog that was stuck in a drainage canal, unable to climb the steep walls. Now Conchita's back. Well, we received a call this morning from somebody driving past on the M5, saying they had seen the same dog in the canal. So it's day two, we're going to try again, hopefully be successful. Um, so we've got the other team going from down there, and we're just going to walk together. And we'll hopefully get the dog in the middle. Conchita's brought extra reinforcements this time, in the shape of senior inspector James Murphy. How's it going, sir? <laughs> nice to meet you. Ahoy, fellow adventurer and discoverer. OK, we're going to wait here, and, and Andrew and them are going to chase the dog this How way. How far down are they going? They, they hit um, Access Park. Wildlife inspector Kira Joshua and trainee Nadia Hugo are also here, and chief inspector Andres Fenter is further down the canal. They're leaving nothing to chance this time. This is a regular thing with dogs in the canal. They seem to fall in or get chucked in or whatever. So we end up having to do this, uh, you know, quite often. Yeah, just arrived. I just spoken to Alpha. He said they're about to go under the M5. There's no way the dog could have gone uh, past them. They got in at the beginning of the canal and they're coming towards you. Can we not feed the rope? Through it. I'm tired, yeah. There he is. There he is. Is he coming? Yeah, leave it, Conchita. Stand closer, so we've got, we've got a solid wall. And he just won't, as long as he doesn't get past us here, and then they, they could come up behind him and... Hey, big boy! He's just panicking. He doesn't know what he's... He's just scared. Don't let him get past my no idea. Come, sunshine. Kira, are you ready? You might... Hey, big boy! Come on! Come on! Come on! There we go! Gonna go over, huh? Come on, there we go! Come on! Come on! Come on, boy! Come on, Baba. Pull it. Pull it. Push it down. There you go. Got him. OK. Got him. OK. I think he's going to try and bite us. Our rescues like this, you do need, you know, the numbers of people involved definitely helps a lot. One, two, three. Two, three. OK. You got it? Got him. Got it. Got it. You can take the side. You're going to let go. Even through this glove, I can feel the ribs. I'm very scared. Um, not aggressive, just just doesn't know. Bewildered is the word I'm looking for. It, it's a white breed German Shepherd, so it's it, it's quite a significant breed uh, for this area. So it is it is my suspicion that it is owned. Um, maybe it's been lost for 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 some time. I don't know bit of TLC and hopefully the owners will claim it. The dog will go back to the SPCA to recover and they'll wait in hope for a call from his owner. Inspector Wilbur Kinkabe is on his way back to Lavender Hill, to the yard where nine dogs were covered in fleas and ticks. It's seven days since he issued a warning to the owner. I'm just coming for the follow-up now, as I've left a warning for cleaning up the area. The weeds and old mattresses have gone, but the dogs haven't changed much. Yeah, the situation is you've cleaned the area, but the animals that I was referring to as well, that has got mange, that he was supposed to be taken to a mobile clinic, but he said the mobile clinic weren't there. The dogs are still untreated, am I correct? That's right. They are still untreated for the mange, which I was concerned of. Wilbur consults Chief Inspector Andres Fenter. You must give them a 24 hour or not a 24 by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. They must contact you with proof of treatment and grooming of the dog, failing which you will obtain a court order and you will remove the dogs. Okay, thanks. Over and out. <laughs> Chief Inspector, I've spoken to him now about this whole situation. He's not actually happy that you haven't taken these dogs to a vet and also the grooming. You need to take them to a grooming parlor and you need to take these dogs to a vet. Decide to give you 24 hours. Failing wish, I'm going to have to confiscate these animals and I can take these animals without your consent. The deadline's clear. 
If the dogs haven't seen the vet by the following morning, Wilbur will take the matter to the court. Four days ago, Chief Inspector Fenter rescued a cat whose leg had become trapped in a wall. Okay, that whole leg is, looks like it's broken off. The leg couldn't be saved, but the surgery to remove it was a complete success. Now Fenter is returning the cat to his owner, although it turns out that he's not really a pet, but a semi-wild street cat who's been adopted by the local shopkeeper. I just need you to complete that part for me, saying that you are the owner. He's been eating fine, he's been um, walking okay, all right. Uh, the vets are very happy with, with the progress. He'll be weary for a couple of days. He knows this area. Shop owner Sean Dale okay. will be keeping a watchful eye out for the cat as he adapts to his new three-legged life. He just comes and goes. Basically, when we open up in the morning at like six, he's here. The back door waiting and then um, makes his way in. <laughs> and we feed him and he hangs around a bit. Then he goes out and he comes back in the afternoon for snack. And then he ducks and does his thing and comes back in the evening again. And then he's here, he spins a couple of hours here at the like, clothes, sort of knows clothes in time. But it's got more than nine lives in it. It's quite a, quite a tough little character. But Sean, thank you. All right, I'll keep in touch. Cool. The dog rescued from the canal has been recovering at the SPCA and slowly learning to trust the people there. Now he's ready for vet Miles Penfold to take a look at him. He was found, uh, I think, two days ago, running up and down in the canal. And uh, he was very nervous when he came in. So we just let him calm down now. Now he's quite used to being handled. Having a look at the eyes and the teeth, they're nice and clean, the gums are pink, the eyes are clear, there's no signs of cataracts. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, Jesse, can you just hold him, just bring him this way? And if you can just hold him short, and if we can just muzzle him. He's almost certainly someone's pet, but he doesn't like being handled. Easy, 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 come, 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 come. He's still a, a little bit nervous, but compared to yesterday, I mean, we, we, we could hardly touch him yesterday. All right, that's all fine. Okay, just having a look at a few of the, um, they, so, some dogs will be a little bit sensitive to just being touched underneath in the groin area, like that. Um, he's not painful there, the skin's all quite normal there. The lymph nodes are all normal in the back of the leg and basically clinically really normal. He is, a, he is rather underweight, not excessively, but he is quite thin. Um, so really we feed him up for three or four weeks and, and he'll put all his condition back on there. And then if the owners do not come forward, uh, be over to, to the adoption center. Meanwhile, out in the kennels, there's been a surprise visit from the owner of the flea-infested dogs from Lavender Hill. She's brought the dogs in, and she's accepted she needs help. But now, have you done the... Wilbur has persuaded her that nine dogs is too many for her to look after properly. They've come to an agreement. This lady is the owner of these dogs. Um, she's gonna select three dogs now, and the other rest we're gonna keep it here. It's going to be better to control uh, a lesser dog than many dogs. And uh, even on the yard, to clean the yard, there's going to be less work to clean. The woman will take three dogs home after they've been treated for fleas, ticks, and any mange they might have. The rest of the dogs will also get the treatment they need and then they'll be prepared for adoption. It's a compromise that suits everyone. The dog just came and bite the horse on the road. It's a month since a horse was attacked by a pit bull terrier that had escaped from its yard. This is one of the worst injuries I've seen with a dog bite. The law enforcement will confiscate this dog. Assessment at the SPCA confirmed the dog was dangerous and it was humanely euthanized to prevent any further attacks.
Thankfully, the horse has made remarkable progress in the care of stable master Tex Davy. Hello, girl. We're back now with this filly, Darling, her name is. Uh, the one who was unfortunately attacked by the dog, the pit bull. Um, she's been in now approximately uh, four weeks. And as you can see, this wound has healed tremendously well. Okay, you have a little bit of a lip, what we call a lip here, which is basically dead skin, which will fall off with a little bit of time. Um, there will be an ointment that will be applied and uh, an antibiotic spray. And then if you look further back here, which was the deeper wounds, they've healed very, very nicely. It's, they've, they, they actually sealed. The owner has been in a couple of times to see me and uh, obviously they they're very chuffed and uh, the kids at home are, are eagerly awaiting her arrival. Very nice owner, very concerned owner. So we're quite happy that this, this pony can go back to the owner. The horse just needs a final check over from the vets. Then she should be able to go home within the week. It's wildlife inspector Kira Joshua's day off today so trainee inspector Liesl Pienaar is working solo when she gets a report of some deadly creatures found in the garden of a house. It's in the Constantia Valley, 10 miles outside Cape Town. Today we got a, a call for two puff adders, which are venomous snakes, um, in so one of the most venomous snakes in South Africa. The puff adder is found throughout Southern Africa. It can strike suddenly and quickly, digging long fangs into its prey. Thankfully, Liesl used to work in nature conservation and has plenty of experience handling snakes. Are they in here? The gardeners have already trapped the two snakes and have put them in plastic tubs. Yeah, he's in very good shape. There is a male and a female. They seem calm, but Liesl knows exactly how dangerous they can be. With the puff feathers, you have about eight hours. Um, they've got cytotoxic venom, so it will basically um, eat the, the, the meat and the flesh and stuff. The homeowner spotted the snakes in the garden, but knew he didn't want to handle them himself. I tried to find a number of a snake catcher. That didn't work. Meanwhile, the gardeners had got themselves two buckets, and well, there's only one fearless chap, and that's Charles the gardener. The rest were very scared of any activity going on. and kept their distance, but Charles is fearless with snakes. A lot of times we have a problem because um, people are afraid of snakes, so they don't generally try and save them, they usually try and kill them. So um, today we, we've, we've got lucky and they actually tried to catch them, they were successful and they're going back to the wild. Liesl plans to release the snakes in a large nature reserve where there are no houses. I'm going to take um, this drum over there. I'm basically just going to tip it over and make some noise this side, hoping that they'll move away from the noise. So it's a, it's a good release site because it's fairly understood by, um, by man. So they uh, should fit in very well, yeah. Especially since we're going to release them as a pair as well. Good release. At least they didn't go towards the road. They both went off into the bushes. Um, I'm sure they'll find each other again. The dogs from Lavender Hill have been receiving treatment for their tick and flea infestation, and now they are ready to be assessed for adoption. Volunteer Malcolm Rhodes will assist SPCA animal behaviorist Candice de Villiers. We're going to be assessing this dog to try and see if she is suitable for adoption and which home would suit her, which, which she would fit into nicely. Okay, so the next step is going to be stroking her, see if she enjoys the affection from the humans. She is uh, showing her flank, lifting her leg, showing her flank, pulling her ears slightly back, which is a, a sign of um, 
a little bit of submission as well as please don't hurt me, I don't mean you any harm. So from here we're going to be going over to checking her teeth to see if she's happy with humans handling her in her mouth, in her face. Clearly she doesn't mind that at all, her tail's wagging all the way through. And then we're going to go over to a safe hug. Clearly she's also very happy with that. It's nice to be able for us to kind of have an indication as to the dog's personality. This particular dog would be suitable with children. Um, some dogs do not appreciate being hugged and handled and in their faces. With a food bowl, some dogs can be more possessive over food, uh, especially if they have been starved. The plastic hand is um, there to be utilized so that it's not our hands. Put the hand in the food and scramble the food around while she's eating. And she's not 100% happy with it, but she's allowing it. Very good candidate for, for re-adoption. It's a happy dog. Might need a little bit more confidence with new owners and the household, but she should be able to cope very happily within just getting used to the new household. One down, five to go. But if they're all as friendly as this one, it shouldn't be long before they're in new homes. Darling, the horse that was attacked by a dog, has been given the all clear by the SPCA vets and now Inspector Wilbur Kenkebi has the happy task of helping owner Shamil Jacobs take her home. I feel it's good now that the horse is going home. Um, it is now treated, it's healed up nicely. We're taking it home now. This was a very sad situation where the horse was so buttoned. But now it's fine. Now I'm happy, I am happy now. Cape of Good Hope SPCA has a specialist horse unit with a staff of six, all dedicated to providing the help animals like this need. Like the other 93 SPCAs in South Africa, they depend on public donations to support them in this work. All these wounds that are badly open, as you know, they all healed up. And this one is also nicely healed up. The speed of Darling's recovery took everyone by surprise. When I first saw the horse that time, I didn't know if she's going to love or if she's going to die. And I must say thank you to the SPCA because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't know what happened to her. I must say I'm very amazed that um, she's quickly got better because I thought it's going to maybe take a year or it was not more than a year, but I'm very glad she is better. Shamil's family are delighted to have her back. We happy to see darling, Ibi. Darling's gonna go, get away now. Our grandchildren, they always, everyone likes the horse because she, anyone can take her out of the stables and take her for a walk. She'll do nothing, she'll just walk with him. I'm very pleased to have her back. This place is unhygienic. When Inspector Wilbur Kinkabe found nine dogs covered in fleas and ticks and living in a dirty yard, he persuaded the owner to bring them into the SPCA for treatment and to sign over six of them. One of them has already found a new home. Marimba has been living with the Snell family for a week now. We've been to the SPCA early to mid-January and we looked at the dogs there, but we didn't quite gel with anyone in particular and then we went again last Saturday and then we saw Marimba straight away and here picked up on the Wednesday. They do a lot of work for all kinds of animals and it just seemed like an obvious place to go. And the people who work, they're very dedicated and they were good with us. So. Come on. Come. Yeah, she settled well. On the first night we came back, she was really sweet. Um, Amy was chasing after her, trying to touch her paws because she didn't I didn't know what paws were. And Marimba kept moving away. Um, and then eventually Marimba just lay down and let Amy touch her and pat her and it was really sweet. She's so well behaved and mm. 
almost like she's so well trained. The description said she was good with children and that was important. She's quite an interesting dog because she has she has a very relaxed temperament but also she has a high energy. I couldn't believe how quickly we grew attached to her. Just one day and we, we just thought, well. I mean, the longer she stays here, the more we love her. We think, wow, she's just such an amazing dog. There's more good news in the case of the dog that was lost in a canal. The SPCA have tracked down his owner. Courtly Oliver says the dog was frightened by fireworks and escaped. The dog just got out. How the dog got out, I wouldn't know. And I was really happy to find that it was safe. The dog, Rex, was a gift from his wife. So Courtly was especially distraught when Rex disappeared. It was given to me, there's a photo of him over there. That's when I got him. And, um, I mean, you don't want to lose something that's been given to you, man. You know, when he was found, I was happy. It's been five weeks of uncertainty, but now Courtley and Rex are reunited for good. Oh, my word. Hey, don't ski. Do not try and injure it. He's dangerous. He just went down. This is the first time I've ever seen a case like this. Oh, my God. I'm taking this dog. I should actually prosecute you for that. He's in shocking condition. This is abuse as far as I'm concerned. <gasps> Dot in him? Oh no. If he falls, he's dead. The Cape Peninsula, home to three and a half million people and around 350 baboons. The baboons live in social groups known as troops, and there are 13 of them in the mountains and coastal areas that surround Cape Town. Up in the mountains, the baboon troops lead a peaceful existence. But when humans and baboons get closer together, it can lead to conflict. It's midday and a call has come in to the Cape of Good Hope Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, one of 93 SPCAs in South Africa. A large male baboon has been spotted in a quiet suburb. Wildlife Inspector Kira Joshua and Trainee Inspector Liesl Pienaar have been dispatched. First avenue, retreat heading towards Retreat Road. Yes, he's moving fast. He is moving very fast. We're on our way now to a call about a baboon that's um, dispersed um, from a troop in Tokai, and he's now on the move again. Male baboons are said to disperse when they leave the troop they were born into to go in search of another troop to join. Unfortunately, this male's dispersal has led him into a residential area. So we're on our way now to retreat that was where he was last seen. Um, so we're going to see if we can get a, a visual on him. And once we do, then we're going to contact uh, the vet that's going to be darting him. We'll assist him on that. The kilo is to go Station Road. Station Road, according to my map, runs down parallel with the railway. Station Road. Okay, 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 okay. Some of the residents aren't happy at the baboon's arrival in their area. And the baboon, on the other hand, is getting stressed at so many people being around. Kira, it's next door! We jumped up from that side to this side, so it must be somewhere here. The important thing right now is just trying to keep a, a visual on the baboon so we know exactly where he is when the vet comes. Have you guys got him? Where's he going? Oh, not again. Kira and Liesl want to get the baboon out of here. The people could try to hurt the baboon, and if he feels threatened, he could attack. Hey, don't do it, don't ski. Oh my word. Please quiet down. Sorry, we need him to stay. I need you to keep quiet and stay away. He is dangerous. It's in a public area, so the public aren't really understanding what the behavior of the boons. So they just see it as a threat. And they are going to be abusive towards it, try and injure it, but as people do when they don't understand about an animal. We need him to stay where, where, um, at one spot where we can actually dart him. The only way to capture a dispersed email, because it's a wild baboon, um, 
is to dart it. And you can't use any other method, like the syringe bow or anything, because he's, he's on the move. So that's why you need to use a dart gun. Kira is moving down again. He's going towards 2nd Avenue again. OK, just keep your eye on it, Lisa. Okay. The darting needs a specialist veterinarian. Dr. Hamish Curry is on his way, and the sooner he gets here, the better. The crowd's not helping much because um, he's frightened and he just wants to run. And what we ideally want is for him to be calm and still, and then um, it'd be easier to dart and safer as well. Oh no, these dogs. Oh no. Is he here? Dr. Curry's arrived. Just let him settle if you can. He will never get... come here with these people here. Yeah. If we can just try and take the people away. Um, yeah. Just try and get the people away. Yeah. Have we got any food um... we can tempt him with? Okay, brilliant. What we're trying to do now, because obviously the people and everything is just causing more commotion, um, we're trying to keep him calm. I mean, he will take some food, so if you're having a nice position, and he mustn't see the, the vet as well with the dart gun, because then he's just going to move off. So while he's eating, trying to distract him, then from the other side, the vet darts him. Get him! It's not an easy shot, and it's missed the target. The minute he realizes he's been chased, it's almost impossible to get a dart into him. You know, you've got to, you've got to do it without him having eye contact with you. Kira is down. Where is he now? Uh, in Retreat Road. Lofla Nursery School. Is he in the nursery school? He jumped from the roof of that building into the street, jumped into the nursery school, so he's somewhere here again. He's moved on to another school, but thankfully it's closed today. The police officers have been working hard to keep away the panicking public. Because he's totally in charge, eh? He's like... Yeah. <laughs> eh? We've been following the baboon now for about two hours. Well, we asked the cops again to keep everybody off the... away from the scene, so we try and get him calm um, before they take a shot. <laughs> dart in him. The dart's in his back. Nice, oh. nice position. Dr. Curry's dart is spot on this time. But the sedative takes a few minutes to take effect. And before it does, the baboon has moved closer to the edge of the roof. We've got to try and get him off the roof. If he falls, he's dead. Liesl, see, we can't get around the school. This is the furthest. We need to get on the roof. He's about a meter or so from the end here. Come quickly. Oh, no. Oh, no. An urgent call has come in. All the other inspectors are out in the field, so Chief Inspector Andries Fenter has decided to handle the job himself. We got a call that there's a cat stuck up a initially electricity pole. It turns out to be a telephone pole. Um, it's been stuck since Saturday. It seems to be quite aggressive. The electricity department tried to get it down. They failed, so we'll make our attempt now. Hi. Uh, you said that you've got a ladder for us. The person who phoned the SPCA has prepared a ladder for Fenter. Thank you. You have to be careful of getting scratched. You have to be careful of not falling down. I hope there's no live wires up there. If there is, uh, hopefully these gloves would protect me. You can already see that it's, it's very wary of what's going on around it. Um, see, there's a bird nest up there. So it could have been chased by dogs. The cat's unusual in being pure white. She's showing no sign of the aggression Venter had been warned about. Okay, she seems to be friendly. You're safe. It's all right. Milo. Okay. Okay, just take your dog away, please. Milo, come here. 
It's 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 not a feral. It's it's a friendly cat. Um, it's quite thin. It liked being scratched or rubbed. So must be our own cat somewhere in the neighbourhood. I need you to just sign a form for me that I'm taking the cat in. If people look for it, they need to contact us. All right. Okay. Well, my son came around early one morning and he told me that the um, cat has been stuck here like for more than four days or whatever. So I'm um, actually glad that you guys came out to really see that um, something was done with a cat because I'm an animal lover myself. And I really appreciate it now. Everybody's got peace of mind and that the cat has been rescued as such. We'll take it back to the ESPCA, to the hospital. Let them assess it, uh, give it some TLC. Um, see if anyone comes out to claim it. If not, we'll send it over for possible adoption. It's three o'clock in the afternoon in Cape Town. SPCA wildlife inspector Kira Joshua, trainee inspector Liesl Pienaar, and specialist vet Hamish Curry have spent the last two hours trailing a large male baboon that has been moving through a residential suburb. I need you to keep quiet and stay away, he is dangerous. They want to protect the baboon and the people and get the animal out of here. Dot in him. Come quickly. He falls, he's dead. Dr. Curry has succeeded in darting the baboon, he's not. but it's climbed the roof of a school in the few minutes before the sedative kicks in. Inspector Conchita Milburn has arrived, and she's found a ladder. We're in the courtyard. Conchita got away in. Don't fall off the ladder, eh? Hey? Amy, you don't suppose you have gloves, eh? I've got gloves. The sedative is only mild. It won't be long before the baboon starts to come round. If he wakes up now, he'll be panicked and angry. How many minutes do we have, Amish? Eh? How many minutes do we have? Just zap him with that. Kira? Yeah? Just inject him with a bit of this. Dr. Curry sends up a second dose to buy them a little more nice. time. How's he doing? He's OK. I need to find, he's, he's quite heavy. I won't be able to carry him. Yeah, that's why we need the rope. Rope. That's all right, bring that, bring that. We're looking for a way now to lower him down from here. You got those gloves? Yeah. Kira, maybe come this side. Come on the other side. OK, we can start sliding him down. Be careful, he's slipping. OK, let him go down. Lift his head down. Is somebody at the bottom of the Is there somebody to catch him there? Let him start coming. We need somebody at the bottom to recover him, eh? That's fine. Okay. How much further? Okay. It's touching. Okay. Okay. Okay, rest. Okay. Right, now we want to get him down here. Just give me a hand and just grab him here. Here. Yeah. And somebody help me with this rope. Yeah. So let him go down again. Yeah. Okay. Slowly, slowly. They want to take the baboon back into the wild, somewhere away from the city, but they can't do that straight away. First, they have to make sure he's not carrying tuberculosis and they also want to tag him. Right, now let's get him into the cage. Yeah. We want to collar this boy. We've got a TB test him. TB is highly contagious, and they can't risk him spreading the disease. If he has it, the baboon will have to be euthanized. It will take three days for the test results to come through. In the meantime, he'll be well looked after at a holding facility in the Tokai Nature Reserve. Call has come in to the SPCA about a dog that is sick and suffering. Senior Inspector James Murphy has been dispatched to check it out. There's a small dog in the front yard. He looks healthy enough. 
Hey, come on. Hi, good day. In the SPC, hey, I um, received a concern about a Rottweiler that stays on this property. Mm -hmm. It's thin and its teeth are falling out. <laughs> No, there's nothing wrong with the dog. It was sick, but it's healing now again. Can I see him, please? Murphy is in for a terrible shock when he's led through to the back. Oh, my God. Hi. I'm taking this dog. There's a Rottweiler there, and it is skin and bone. It is mangy as, as anything. Um, it looks terrible. And the yard is a mess. It's one of the worst I've seen in a long time. The dog is old, but that doesn't explain the appalling state he's in. That dog looks terrible. Why does that one look like that? I don't know, because... Uh... This is Brancic. Yeah, but you've allowed him to go like that. He looks terrible. That's your responsibility. If you've, you've, you've taken on the responsibility of a dog, I should actually prosecute you for that. I'm really, really not happy with those conditions. This could be a criminal cruelty case. Murphy's priority for now is to get the dogs out of here. I can't leave that dog in these conditions. I don't suggest you get another dog, ever. The little white dog looks healthy, but Murphy feels the owner can clearly not be trusted to care for her animals. He wants her to sign both dogs over to the SPCA, and he accepts her cruelty may not have been intentional. It is difficult to, to kind of decide what to do um, under the circumstances, and. Looking at her situation, she's kind of had things happen in the family. She's unemployed, um, and that, so there's a lot of factors that kind of uh, have played a part in, 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 in her not being able to, to, to sort the dog out. She's back out the jungle. Oh, here we go, big boy. Come on. Come, boy. Come on, sit. There you go. Come on, hey. This dog is ancient. Hey, oh, careful, okay. Oh, he's a little grumpy too. He's got mange and his teeth are worn down. He's very, very old. I think it's the whole age, age thing as well and living in an environment like this. I don't think he even had access to proper shelter. I don't know if this is where he was like resorted to sleeping. Come on. Murphy will take the dog back to the SPCA hospital to see if anything can be done for him, though he fears the worst. He'll make sure the little white dog doesn't suffer a similar fate. I can't leave the dog here. I can't leave him here. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't leave you with the dog. It's better that we take both dogs. I'm going to go away. The owner's not happy about Murphy's decision, but he's in no doubt that this is the right thing to do. And um, she's wanting to keep this one because it barks and keeps the place safe, but that's not my concern. Uh, I don't think she should keep these dogs at all. What with the yard that looks like it? That looks like that. I'm going to write you a note now that you need to um, clean up here, but I don't suggest you get another dog. If you, if you can't uh, look after him properly. Is it just sign there? I'm just asking you to sign the form. About what? About the dogs. Look, the condition of the dog at, at, the, was at the back here. We've taken the dog and we've taken the other dog. All I'm asking is that she signs this form um, and she's obviously now broken down. So uh, maybe you can just sign on her behalf if she's not well. Yeah. The relative agrees sorry, to yeah. sign the dogs over. I can't leave these dogs here. I'm sorry. <sighs> she's. I think she's kind of had a bit of a bit of a tough life, and and, and, and it's just this is kind of just a breaking point. Us, us taking her dog away. I can't leave the dog here. She's in a state, and and, and uh, I think just getting the dogs out is is, is so much better. You got to kind of have sympathy for the people in some instances. Have a bit of give and take. Hopefully she can sort this out and sort herself out in her family and without the responsibility of having to feed these dogs.
The baboon that was darted in the retreat district has been brought to the Tokai Nature Reserve by wildlife inspector Kira Joshua and vet Hamish Curry. Come. He's moving. Uh, waking up. You want to give him another jab? Yeah. The baboon's now safe from attack by people upset that he was moving through their suburb. These baboons are constantly trying to move off the mountain to find new troops to spread their genes, and because there's an urban area in between, they often get caught in there, and that's where the tragedy takes place. Be careful he doesn't bite you now, eh? The reason we got him is that he went into the school where there were fewer people. Then he was relaxed, and he wasn't so sort of vigilant and on his guard, and that's how we managed to get him. One of the problems is we've identified um, tuberculosis, spinal tuberculosis, in the Tokai troop. So it would be irresponsible to move this baboon to another troop because we could spread disease. So what we've done now is we've darted him, we've tuberculosis tested him, and in 72 hours we'll be able to read that test. If it's negative, the baboon will be taken to another nature reserve where there is a shortage of males, and um, this will improve the, the genetic diversity of that population as well. Let's hope the TB test's negative and we should be fine. It is quite amazing to be so close to such a magnificent animal, especially with, with baboons, because they primarily say they have a lot of human qualities and they do human, they have human antics as well. It also makes you appreciate them more. Hopefully in three days' time we'll see what, what's the baboon's fate. You were fantastic today, really. You did a good job. No, you got it. No, no. Senior Inspector James Murphy has arrived back at the SPCA with the old emaciated dog and the little white dog that lived with it. Veterinarian George Birch will take a look at the one Murphy's most concerned about. So basically this is what a chronic skin condition is looking like. You can see the, you can see the hair loss, uh, the thickening of the skin, get this dark thickened skin, um, all this uh, oozing and crusting. Also here on the face, demodectic mange has a prevalence for the for the eyes and the ears, also on, on the hock and the elbow. So, so this is probably de demodectic mange, but it's going on for a while. You see, this dog is really emaciated; it's depressed, and uh, the skin is just looking terrible. When a condition like uh, has gone on like this, you know, the, any kind of owner would notice something is wrong. Um, we've see, we see dogs that look much better than this when the mange has started and owners are not sure and they come to us and they ask, you know, what's going on, can we do something? But when it's gone, you know, gone on this long, and I mean this is months, then obviously the owner doesn't care. So an animal like this um, unfortunately needs to be put to sleep. We can't find a home for a dog like this. The little white dog appears healthy. He'll get a thorough checkup later as a first step towards finding a caring new owner for him. Inspector Wilbur Kinkabe is responding to a report of a neglected horse. He's been told it's emaciated to the point of starvation. We are here for the very thin horse that might be underfed or maybe sick. Bum! Bum! Yay. You need to see the, the horse now. You can, we're just gonna see, we're not taking him. The young man leads Wilbur out through a yard full of scrap and building materials. At the end of it is a small stable and a pony. It seems the report was accurate. This horse is very thin. Because he was thinner than it. I think we must take it in, uh, I'll organize a, a box and we can take it to the SPC so um, they can treat it. Can't stay like this. What are you doing with this horse? Do you, uh, is it a cut horse or what is it for? Are you keeping it for what? So my father bought it for my sister when she was small. Now he's been here over 16, 16 years now. 
16 years? Yeah. How long has he been so thin? November began to get thin like this. Mm. Um, I just want to know why you don't clean up. You see, this place is also very dirty. Yeah? I mean, there's so many things lying around which can even hurt the horse when he goes out here. Yeah? But why don't you put a uh, uh, straw here? Yeah? Now he straw is in the car. That sassels. Yeah, my, you must have in for the bedding. Wilbur's not happy with the pony's health or his living conditions. The state of this horse is not good. The bedding, there's no bedding, and the place is dirty. I'm coming to speak to the house owner now to see that uh, if he can um, let me take the horse in for treatment. The young man's father doesn't want Wilbur to take the pony. One way or another, Wilbur wants to ensure the pony is seen by a vet. You don't want us to take it. Then we're going to have to give you a warning to say you must take it to a private vet. You can't say you can't take it. You must take it. If you haven't taken it within the period of time we're given, then we're going to have to confiscate it, take it by force, and then prosecute you. I've just given them now the 24-hour warning note to take the horse in because they don't want us to fetch the horse. They are sort of worried about the cost that they will be charged for, for bringing in the horse. But uh, it would be best for them if we could bring it in by ourselves. Wilbur will need to see proof that the pony has been taken to a vet within 24 hours. If he doesn't get that, he'll be back to seize the pony. Whatever happens, he doesn't want the pony to stay as it is. Meanwhile, in the hospital, vet Miles Penfold is ready to take a look at the white cat Chief Inspector Fenter rescued from the top of a telephone pole. Here we go, my boy. OK, we're just going to be just doing a basic clinical um, on this cat. First thing we can notice is that um, this is a really friendly cat. Okay, it's not a typical feral stray cat that would be hunched up at the back of the cage and really scared. Um, so most likely this cat is, is owned and uh, we, we definitely hope that the owners are going to come forward and, and claim their cat. Kim, come on. If we look at it, its general condition, it's, uh, it's not in bad nick. I mean, this is, this is obviously an owned cat. It's not thin. Its coat is quite nice and shiny. It's not dirty. Um, you know, it's a really nice, friendly cat. The first major thing that we have a look at that jumps out at you is, well, the ears are, are pretty scabby. And um, with a white cat like this, um, especially here in South Africa, with the sun, is, is a very typical thing we'll see is, is just sunburn. And, um, and given enough sunburn and time, eventually what happens is, is uh, we can get cancer forming in these ears. Typically when they start going cancerous, uh, we really will start losing tips of the ears. Uh, so yeah, our, our non-pigmented white animals uh, suffer a bit uh, down this side of the globe. The cat will go into the SPCA cattery. They'll wait for the owners to claim her, and they'll be advising them to keep her indoors most of the time, away from telephone poles and out of the sun. There's been an unexpected development in the case of the emaciated pony that Inspector Wilbur Kenkebi saw yesterday. The owners have changed their mind about letting the SPCA vet see the pony, and they've brought it in to Grassy Park. Stable master Tex Davy has been taking a look at the horse. As you can see, he's emaciated. He's in shocking condition. He hasn't been fed properly for a long, long time. Uh, he has no nutrition. He's, 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 he's actually bones. He's got to be in the region, I would estimate, about 18 to 20 years of age. It's amazing uh, how these animals can actually stand up to this, because this is abuse as far as I'm concerned, near starvation. They were very reluctant to uh, bring this pony in, saying that uh, the pony only recently stopped eating and so on and so on, which is normally the story we get in these cases, typical. My experience tells me that this pony has been emaciated for a very long time. 
this is basic starvation. It's ignorance in a, in, a, in a sense, because people want these ponies. They all look nice and cute, and this is the end result because they don't they don't have the know-how or the means to look after them, and there's no excuse for this. The pony is old and very sick. Undernourishment over a period of time can cause permanent damage. I'd like to see this pony being signed over to us. We would then make a decision as to can we home him? Is it viable to home him? You know, give him to, to somebody that's going to care for him. But unfortunately I have my doubts because he is an aged fella and he doesn't have that many years. And for him to recover, there's no guarantees that he will. The pony's future will be given very careful consideration and they'll also decide what should be done about the owners. SPCA Wildlife Inspector Kira Joshua and Trainee Inspector Liesl Pienaar can't resist paying a visit to the baboon that was captured after he moved into a Cape Town suburb. The baboon has been kept in a cage for two days now, pending the results of tests for tuberculosis. It's not ideal that he's kept in captivity. I mean, nobody likes to see any wildlife in captivity. It is necessary for the moment, so you can actually observe him for the, the TB testing, see what the results would be. It doesn't seem to be stressed out, and that's what, what we have to observe as well. As you can see, he seems to be quite lax at the moment. So tomorrow evening, we'll have a final outcome if he's positive or negative. And if it's positive, it would ultimately mean that we need to have him euthanized, unfortunately. If he tests negative, which we hope for, on Friday will be taught again and a radio collar should be put on him before he's released. They can't risk spreading tuberculosis, so now all depends on those test results. It's going to be an anxious 24 hours. Back at the SPCA, vet George Birch has been taking a look at the little white dog that senior inspector James Murphy brought in. They've named him Jake, and he's much better off than the emaciated and mange-ridden dog that he lived with. Um, it's quite strange that the owner would, I don't know, make sure that the one looks like this, and while the other one is um, really bad, bad, bad. This one feels in quite good form. You can see the coat is quite thick. There's quite a lot of tissue on the bones. Clinically, this dog looks in really, really good condition. I think all this dog probably would need is, um, you know, a wash and uh, a bit of a brushing, and then some deworming and and some good food. So basically, this uh, animal like this, we would send to kennels and see if we can't uh, get a new home for it. Jake seems a little shy, and that could be a problem in finding him a new home. The next step will be to have his temperament assessed before deciding whether he's a suitable candidate for adoption. The next day brings rain and a depressing call to the SPCA. A horse has fallen victim to what sounds like a tragic accident. Trainee inspector Emma Linsell is on her way to meet up with senior inspector James Murphy. We're heading to a case. We had a report um, of a horse that was electrocuted in an electric fence last night. So we're just going to go and see exactly what happened, ascertain the facts. Another inspector are on the scene already and we're going to meet them there. When they arrive, it becomes apparent that there was more to this accident than Emma first thought. Thieves stealing copper from electrical cables have been responsible for the horse's death. We, we put them in and they ran, and the next thing, what did he do, George? He just went down. The horse was called Brutus and was a grand champion in dressage events. Apparently, late last night, some guys came in here and they stole the electrical cables and uh, they left the wires lying on the ground here yeah, and the horses were released in here yeah, and this horse stepped on the cables and got electrocuted and, and died due to a heart attack and the owner is very upset and this is you know another reason why uh, um, they need to put a stop to these cable thefts. How would they have got off the pole? This is the first time I've ever seen a case like this. It's a terrible case to uh, come to. The gentleman said it was quick, but thankfully. Yes, it happened that morning about quarter to nine. We just let the horses loose in the paddock and uh, they ran up, uh, up the one side and when the one horse came down, 
He obviously stood on the table and was electrocuted. His legs buckled underneath him and he just fell down. The theft of copper from cables has become an increasing problem in South Africa. It's estimated the thefts cost the South African economy billions of rand, as electricity supplies are disrupted. Brutus's death is a more personal tragedy. Unless they started down there. You see how the cables are hanging. Um, this one's lying here, that one's going all the way along there, and then the cable from that pole is coming down, which is the one the horse stood on. Pretty harsh way to die. All for copper, just for a few, a few rands to put into their pocket. It's put everybody out of electricity and put kids' lives in danger and things like that. It's just total senseless uh, act. The police will investigate the theft. All the SPCA can do is raise awareness of the risks these crimes pose to people and animals. We can only advise the public that this is, has taken place and that just to be aware. Hopefully we can get a media article out and highlight this issue. Hopefully the authorities will also deal with this. We can uh, you know, get the police involved and, and, and uh, um, try and really push this issue. SPCA volunteer Malcolm Rhodes has already started working with Jake. Hello, Jake. The dog rescued by senior inspector Murphy. Jake's not very responsive to people, and that could hamper his chances of getting adopted. Malcolm hopes to put that right. What I'm going to be doing is the usual training that we do with the dogs to make them a bit more adoptable, more easily adoptable and more people friendly. And we use treats to enable us to reinforce the behavior that we want and we ignore behavior that we don't want. There's no uh, reprimand and there's no setting up the dog for failure like saying sit, sit when it clearly doesn't know how to. So it's calmed down now. Come, Jack, let's go. He walked well on the leash, but he wasn't at all, what I could say, people friendly. It looked like he'd been a, a guard dog outside on his own, which I think was the case. And he hadn't spent a lot of time with people, so he tended to ignore people. He's changed considerably now because he's far more happy to see people. Gives him a little bit of freedom. Yes. The moment he, he sits down, we say yes to reinforce the good action and give them the treat immediately. And if we do that long enough, uh, it sinks in and it becomes natural. Yes, but he's still very independent. We need to work on him a lot. Hey, there's a treat, that's, that's what you can get. I work with a number of other volunteers and we work with all the dogs in the adoption kennels. We would obviously like all the dogs to be able to sit, walk properly on a leash, not to jump up. Fortunately, he's not doing that. So at least that's one problem solved. But he's still wandering around on his own at the moment, sniffing, exploring the area, and uh, not coming to me as often as I would like, as I would prefer. He's still a very independent dog. So there's still some work to be done with him, which we're gonna be doing over the course of the next couple of weeks. It might take some time, but Malcolm's determined Jake should be given every chance of finding a new owner. Good dog. Yes. Hey. Nearby, in the horse care unit, the emaciated horse rescued by Inspector Wilbur Kenkebi has had a thorough examination by SPCA vet Miles Penfold. Now Miles, Wilbur and stable master Tex Davy have to decide what can be done for it. The owners have also been to see them and have explained their situation. I would say there was a bit of ignorance coupled with uh, you know, family, family problems as well. The pony is old, 20 years plus, as you can see. Um, the digestive, there's a digestive problem there, uh, they didn't know, as a, hence the ignorance. From a veterinary perspective here, yeah, I can't see that we're ever gonna get any condition back on this horse, uh, really at the end of its lifespan now. Um, and I, I really feel that the kindest thing is gonna be for us to actually um, to euthanize, um, and that would be my recommendation. Teeth are, are really worn down and really starting to find the battling to, to actually chew their food. And I mean, unfortunately, everything just gets to the place where if you can't chew your food and uh, you know get it all down, well, you're going to not get to all your energy requirements, and then you'll end up with what you're seeing over here, which is just a total loss in body mass. It definitely didn't look malicious, and um, you know, I'm very glad that the owners have actually bothered to, to bring this pony through for us. And yeah, but having made an assessment, there's just no ways that we can possibly get condition back on this pony. You know, probably be left 
their own devices with the best care and attention, you know, they might pass away in the next number of months anyway. It's a difficult decision, but they're all agreed, in this case, euthanasia is the only way to prevent further suffering. Senior Inspector James Murphy is in a small town east of Cape Town. He's been told a dog has been left behind when a family moved home. Yay! It's not locked. There's a light on. Uh, house is empty, from what I can see. Hey, how's you all? Hey, there's a big boy. Oh, you big boy. Hey, how are you doing otherwise? You look OK. OK, let's go see what the neighbour has to say. The neighbour says he's been feeding the dog and giving it water because no one else has been around. I don't know what the arrangement she made with the dog now. You see, there's new owners, but they're not here at all. You know, and it's about two weeks already and nobody actually feeds this dog. And apparently it's not her dog, it was her son-in-law. And where is he now? Yeah, I don't know where he is. He's a... It is cruelty, it's, it's abandonment. I mean, the dog hasn't got food, it hasn't got water. It, uh, I mean, anything could happen to the dog and, 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 and there's nobody to, to actually look after it. Thank goodness this neighbour's, uh, you know, attentive enough to actually give us a call. Let's go see. Come. Murphy takes a closer look to try to work out what's going on. Gosh, still a whole pile of stuff here. I don't know who that belongs to. Um, hmm. Otherwise, empty. James decides the dog's life could be in danger, left here alone. Come on. There's no water, there's no kennel, there's no bowls or anything like that to show that the dog's actually getting food. There's nothing, so it's, it's, it's very worrying. And the neighbour said he has given it some food, so maybe that has sustained it for the while that it's been, yeah. Maybe the people that are actually painting it are just kind of throwing it some scraps. You say nobody else has been here? Not yet, not now. Because I see there's a paint. This, yes, they, they, but they only, they've been here yesterday morning for about a half an hour. I think they just come to put stuff in and they left again. Is it? Nobody even fed the dog? Not Because there's not a here. bowl, there's not a kennel, no, there's nothing, nothing in the back there. There's, there's all the rubbish there, but I mean, there's yeah. no, nothing for the dog. I'm going to write a note and take the dog and we'll see what, a, what these people come up with and whether anybody responds within seven days. Come on, let's go. The people can be prosecuted for what they've done here to this dog. It's all a case of just if we can find them, you know. He's got a really nice temperament and he seems to know about walkies, so... It makes it a lot easier to handle the dog. James will notify the police and the owners will have the chance to claim the dog. But it's looking likely that this dog will need a new home. The dog abandoned in Cryfontein has been at the SPCA for a week now, and no one has come forward to claim him. It's time for behaviour expert Candice de Villiers to see if he's a suitable candidate for adoption. Candice will be assisted by Sipiwu Nkibi. We're just going to be doing a behavioural assessment on this dog. Um, he's been abandoned and just to see which family he will fit into, what type of dog and what type of personality he is as well. The first thing we're looking for is, um, does he show any attention to the humans? Um, is he interested in us? Does he want affection? Does he not want affection? This is called the safe hug. It's to see if the dog can handle the pressure, can handle a child hugging him, coming close to him, being in his space. And he's tolerating it quite well. The next thing we're going to be doing is the food bowl to just see if he will handle a young child sticking their heads and their hands in there. So we're once again going to be using the plastic hand to stick in there and see if the dog will tolerate his food being fiddled just while, we're, while he's busy eating. He's allowing it, he's not appreciating it, but he's allowing it. He's eating a little bit faster, but there's no sign of warning or anything like this at the moment with him. 
he would be good with children. I wouldn't advise him going to a family with very young children. I'd advise him to go to a family with kids of about five, seven and upwards. He's very friendly. He's, he's quite happy with being touched and being loved. He's quite affectionate, quite a sweet dog. It's been three days since a large male baboon left his troop and moved into a residential suburb of Cape Town, attracting a lot of attention. Stay away, he is dangerous. Wildlife inspector Kira Joshua feared for the baboon's safety. They just see it as a threat, and they are going to be abusive towards it and try and injure it. <laughs> Dot in him. Eventually, the baboon was darted, sedated, and taken to a place of safety. But before he could be released back into the wild, they had to check whether he was carrying tuberculosis. Now it's the moment of truth. Dr. Hamish Curry has the results of the TB tests, which will determine whether he can be released or whether he'll have to be euthanized. Dr. Curry's given Kira the news. Okay, today's the third day and um, the test is, is negative, so that's a good sign. We are going to now um, sedate him again and then we're going to go off to, um, to the reserve to release him. So today is a good day. Just, just everybody back off and don't look at him. We're going to syringe pull him now because um, he seems to be pretty tactile as in he can get the pole right there. He's not going to move it away as most other primates would. Sedation is necessary for the, not only for the journey, sedation is also necessary for the fact that we're going to need to tag him as well. So it's easy to identify him from the other baboons. Esme Beamish from the University of Cape Town's Baboon Research Unit is taking advantage of the opportunity to gather some data. What we try and do is when we get access to an animal is to get any kind of information that we can. So we do a tissue sample for genetics and then just do these basic morphometric measurements. To, but they do help in terms of understanding the size of the neck and if we radio collar them, which is what we are doing, because the collars have to be made to fit a certain age. They'll be tracking the baboon's movements. The yellow tag will help them quickly spot him when he's joined a troop. They have decided to release the baboon on the Cape of Good Hope Peninsula in a national park well away from any built-up areas. This is a good re reside for the baboon. It's basically between two troops at the moment, so you can make a choice for which one it could be joining. We've waited quite a while now for him to wake up. We can't release him when he's still a bit woozy because even if he stumbles out, he's still woozy. He could be attacked by one of the other baboons. I think we should all back off, eh? Yeah. He's out. Esme Beamish is confident that he'll have a better chance out here than when he left his original troop in Tokai. What we've got in the Cape Peninsula is the 10 troops south of Fishhook, and there's one troop in Takai, which is isolated in, in, by urbanisation. Now those males that disperse, these young males, um, really have nowhere to go. And consequently, they often go up across the Cape Flats and look at the Helderberg Mountains and think, let's get there, um, which is what he did. So what we've done is taken him to an area where the troops that are short of males, and, and he's got a really good chance of, of joining a troop. just getting a bit of a, a view of his territory right now. He has to get accepted into a troop. He can't just walk in there and bash his way in. You know, the females won't like that. And, and if there's a dominant male there, they'll, they'll take him, you know, they'll beat him up. So he's got to feel his way into a troop and get accepted. Ideal scenario right now, if he joins up with a troop, and like any fairy tale, he lives happily ever after.